East as we start to turn that air mass around for us and over the next few hours temperatures in the low 70s eventually the upper 60s a little disturbance working through now with these clouds will start to clear out though for your midweek as temperatures start to warm up we'll talk about all that as WGNO news at five starts now you're watching WGNO news at five New Orleans very own I'm so sorry that this officer was the victim of someone who had no regard for the life of anyone else around him. Honoring a fallen police officer laid to rest this morning. Welcome to WGNO News. I'm Kurt Spring. And I'm LBJ filling in for Susan Rosgen. Dozens of law enforcement and elected officials and family on hand for the funeral of senior NOPD officer Trevor Abney. Abney died from wounds sustained when he was shot on duty in 2020. Today, all his hard work and dedication was remembered in Slidell. Give him eternal rest, oh Lord. You know, Trevor uh, served his community uh, with honor. Um, he made the ultimate sacrifice with honor. Well, at the end of the day, this is like losing family. You know, he's, he's one of us, one of our community, and we are here to pay our respects. Present him now to God most high. The sacrifice that Trevor gave the city of New Orleans will never be forgotten. We have a person who was a Army veteran, a uh, police officer who was killed in a line of duty, and a firefighter. And we thought it would be an uh, honor for us to be here, to honor him and his family for everything they've sacrificed for us. We sent him now to God. Trevor was, a, was an awesome guy. I mean, he and I established a relationship uh, after this unfortunate incident, and we talked a lot uh, after this incident. And, and I'll tell you, he wanted to come back. He wanted to continue to be that servant. So uh, this is the least that I could do is to come and pay him his respect, along with his family, as well as his family in blue. Thank you for sharing senior police officer Trevor Abney with us. It is your love and support that made him a fine officer and a great asset to the New Orleans Police Department. Present him now to God most high. The man accused of shooting Officer Abney, Donnell Hassel, is being held on attempted first degree murder charges at OPSO. Those charges are expected to be upgraded. Trevor Abney's final resting place is the Southeast Louisiana Veterans Cemetery. The NOPD is hoping you can help identify a burglary suspect. He's accused of breaking into a car in the 4400 block of Duplessis. That's in the Fillmore area. Police released some video of the man walking around the neighborhood. The burglary happened around 3.30 Monday morning. The NOPD has identified a man wanted for multiple burglaries. First reported this yesterday when police were trying to identify the man. The man. Uh, they have since determined that 65-year-old Roland James Davis, allegedly responsible for stealing a generator from a shed in the 900 block of Governor Nichols Street. He is also accused of two other burglaries, one from this month and one from last month. Covering the North Shore, new developments in the case of Antonio Tyson. He is the man charged with first degree murder in the deaths of a Covington priest and his assistant. Yeah, and, and the case involves uh, DNA. WGNO's Jordan Lippincott joins us now with the details. Jordan. LBJ Kurt Tyson, who was indicted last month in connection with the murders of Father Otis Young and Ruth Pratt's, was not at court today. However, his defense attorney was, as well as the state prosecutor. Both parties entered into an agreement that the defense has the right to have their own DNA expert present while prosecutors conduct DNA testing. Both the state and defense must agree upon a date for testing, which has not yet been set. They cannot agree on a date or time. The state cannot conduct any DNA analyses until the court sets a date and time. Tyson has pled not guilty to all counts. Attorneys will return to court June 1st for the first phase of discovery. Kurt? All right, Jordan Lippincott reporting for us. Thank you, Jordan. And everybody, we want to remind you, you can stay up to date 
on Tyson's case and future court dates. Plus, get all the latest news headlines all on your phone. Just download the free WGNO News app. Police in Slidell are searching for a juvenile involved in a pursuit of a stolen car Saturday. Police say 18 year olds Kendall and Dalen Jackson were arrested after crashing the stolen car and trying to run from Slidell's canine units. Uh, the two men are in Slidell City Jail while a third suspect who police say they have identified is still on the run. Orleans Parish Sheriff Susan Hudson says she needs more money to handle the challenges of her department's consent decree. And Thursday, she proposed nearly doubling the tax her office collects. Tonight, the public will be weighing in. WGNO's Amy Russo is in Mid-City, where a community forum is being held. Amy? Kerr LBJ, the public has a week and a half to decide whether they're on board with Sheriff Susan Hudson's proposal. Tonight, she's going to hear from some of those residents about their thoughts and concerns. Now, the additional funding would add about $12 million to the sheriff's office, accounting for about 33% of the OPSO's operating budget. It'll be used to address a lot of ongoing problems. The sheriff claims the bulk of the money would be for pay increases, but it would also help with equipment and training, as well as making repairs to the jail. Hudson is seeking to replace a 2.8 mil tax that was approved by voters in 2015 and expires this year and hike it up, essentially doubling it to 5.5 mils. When Sheriff Hudson brought the proposal before the city council last Thursday, a reoccurring theme seemed to be a concern over a lack of public outreach. So if you do want to come to this community forum, it's going to be happening in less than an hour here at First Grace United Methodist church in mid city that millage is going to be on the April 29th ballot. Kurt LBJ. Amy Russo reporting. Thank you, Amy. New at five, the city of Thibodeau is taking applications for the housing choice voucher programs waiting list. It's a federally funded program. Here's what you need to know. Preference will be given to extremely low income, elderly or disabled people to apply. You have to call the number here on your screen. 200 applications will be accepted, and if you move into the city to participate in the program, you have to rent for one year before you use the portability option to move out. After numerous reports of drive-by shootings across the state claiming the lives of innocent people, one legislator is looking to up the penalties. New Orleans Democrat State Senator Jimmy Harris wants to increase the penalties from one to five years in prison to three to 10 years. Under the current law, the interstate did not qualify as a location the statute would apply. This bill will add it following several deadly interstate shootings. Talking with, uh, with some of the law enforcement and some of the judges, when they looked at the, the time on that particular crime and the seriousness you know, of that crime, they thought that the, the one to five wasn't enough. Senator Harris says he does not want people in the city of New Orleans to live in fear of driving on the interstate after reports of so many shootings there. So far, there has not been any public opposition to the bill, which now heads to the full Senate for debate. This afternoon, the Zurich Classic Celebrity Shootout took over the TPC Louisiana. Chief Meteorologist Hank Allen is at the course in Avondale to let us know what's going on today. Hank? Hey guys, yeah, just about everything wrapped up now. The pros were out here. It was their practice round day, so uh, watching them, you know, just sort of toss the balls around the green to get a feel for the roll and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, the setup continuing out here at the course, always fun to come out here through the weekend. Every day you come out here, a little bit more is being set up, ready to go. We're right off the 18th fairway here. A couple new items behind me, the Bayou Rum Lounge, the Jameson Lounge. On the other side of the fairway, you've got a uh, McLove Ultra Lounge. So, of course, no shortage of libations out here if you're out here watching uh, the rounds over the next few days. You can take a look at some of the video that we got earlier, some of the pros out there. Again, just walking through the course, getting a feel, doing their practice rounds. Uh, the groupings came out today. I'll mention some of those for you as well. Uh, some of the fan favorites you may have to get out here a little early. Jeff Ogilvy, former uh, uh, major winner, paired with Kevin Stadler. He's starting at 7 o'clock on Thursday morning. Jason Duffner, 7:13, And then, of course, uh, one of the fan favorite teams always out here, Billy Horschel, along with former LSU star Sam Burns. They're starting about 7:39 on Friday morning. They're followed by Max Homer and the Colin Morikawa team, and those guys are paired with the Fitzpatrick's brothers. So uh, I guess if you're ready to go on Thursday, if you're out here early, you'll be able to see a good round of some of the, uh, I guess, more high-profile names. 
David Duvall, though, playing with John Daly. They're coming up later in the afternoon on Thursday. Tell you what, guys, that uh, forecast, though, the timing changing a bit on this rain chance. We'll come back and talk about that here in a little bit. Duvall and Daly should attract a crowd. All right, thanks, Hank. There are some traffic changes on the West Bank this weekend due to the Zurich Classic. Lapalco Boulevard between the West Bank Expressway and where it separates Segnet and Nicole Boulevards is under a modified traffic plan. That means the westbound lanes are closed and instead the eastbound lanes will operate as a two way street and it's going to continue until 7 o'clock Sunday night. News from the NFL today. DeMar Hamlin is cleared to get back on the field. The Bills safety suffered from cardiac arrest on the field at the end of last season. If he takes the field at the start of next season, it could be one of the greatest comebacks in sports history. Hamlin is working out with his teammates to start the season off. He spoke with reporters earlier today about how he's feeling at this point in his recovery. Congratulations. My heart is still in it, you know, my heart is still in the game. Uh, I love the game. Um, it, it's something I want to prove to myself, not nobody else, you know. Uh, it's just, I just want to show people that, that fear is a choice, um, that, you know, you can keep going in something without having the answers and without knowing what's at the end of the tunnel. Hamlin says he wants to use his story to enact change and awareness Especially in youth you sports. And WGNO is your NFL draft headquarters with complete coverage of the first round just about a week away on April the 27th. It starts with a preview at 6.30 that night, followed by the draft selections from 7 to 10.30. After that, Sports Director Ed Daniels and Coach J.T. Curtis will give their takes on the picks in a special edition of Sports Zone. By the way, these Saints pick 30th in the first round. Next on WGNO News, a new TikTok challenge leads to the death of a 13-year-old in Ohio. Which common medicine? The FDA is warning parents to lock up. Plus, there's a few more chances this week to weigh in on the search for the next NOPD chief, where you can voice your opinions on the next top cop. That's still ahead on WGNO News. New warnings tonight about the Benadryl challenge on TikTok after the death of a 13 year old in Ohio. The challenge encourages people to take 12 to 14 pills of the antihistamine Benadryl in hopes of hallucinating. Jacob Stevens tried it with friends recording video, but instead of hallucinating, he started having seizures. 
He was on a ventilator for six days before doctors determined he would never wake up. The FDA has warned about the challenge, saying it can lead to serious heart problems, seizures, coma, and death. It is encouraging parents to lock up any Benadryl that's in the house. One of the country's longest running consent decrees has ended. No, it's not here in New Orleans. In Connecticut, a judge ended the nearly 50 years of federal oversight for the Hartford Police Department. Despite continued concerns about not having enough black or Hispanic officers on the force, that consent decree was supposed to end nearly a decade ago, around the same time that the NOPD entered the country's most expansive federal oversight. City officials have been trying to get out of the NOPD out of it ever since. But the next meeting to update that progress is tomorrow at the Youth Empowerment Center in the East at 6. And tonight there's another meeting to collect input from the public in the search for the NOPD's next superintendent. Last night, the International Association of Chiefs of Police hosted the first meeting. It was in Treme and a handful of people showed up. There are three more meetings this week. Tonight starts at 530 in just a few minutes at Jesuit High School. All right, back out here live. Zurich Classic Week, just a couple days away from the start of the tournament, and we're still dealing with a rain chance at some point during the tournament. We'll talk about that coming up. Out here live, Zurich Classic Week is here, of course. We're just a couple of days away from the start of the tournament. A, uh, a cool evening out here again, thanks to the cloud covering a little bit of that breeze up top. Let's take a look at that forecast here as we head into the start of the tournament on Thursday. Thursday still looks you know, pretty much as we talked about yesterday, breezy, warm, muggy, low 80s. The biggest change here is the timing of that next storm system has really sped up from what looked to be more like early to midday Saturday has now transitioned into Friday, even late afternoon and evening, and then early Friday night. Now, obviously that could switch back. We're still a couple of days out, but the theme here is it now looks like Saturday looks a lot better for the tournament 
And Friday afternoon, you know, you may run into some uh, either delays or maybe a halt to play, and then you just have to sort of compress things after that. But again, as long as you got clear conditions, you know, all day Saturday and Sunday, you should be able to do it. Take a look at those uh, temperatures around the area after we look outside of the Beauvoir Beach Cam. A lot of cloud cover around the region. Got this little disturbance coming overhead, which is producing that right now. Temperatures in the low 70s for just about everybody. And as you look across the region, you can see that disturbance. The air mass is still very dry, so anything showing up on radar not really reaching the ground in our area. Some of it is farther west. West, but it's going to continue to fade out as it moves through. And once this passes by, we'll be left with quite a bit of sunshine here heading into your Wednesday. Temperatures out there tonight, cool, but not near as cold as the past couple of nights. Another night uh, or another morning earlier today on the North Shore with those low to mid 40s. So it was chilly again tonight, low to mid 50s. So a little bit more seasonable out there and some mid to upper 50s to low 60s on the South Shore by the time you start off your Wednesday morning. Tomorrow afternoon, though, gorgeous sunshine back to around 80. And uh, that breeze does start to pick up out of the southeast over the next couple of days, as it typically does out ahead of that next storm system. And so we'll be looking at uh, those uh, winds anywhere from 15 to 20. I think I skipped the humidity graphic there as well. But uh, once again, just sort of another example of once that front pushes through, that cooler and drier air will filter in behind that as well. So you look at that seven-day forecast, and that's what we're looking at here. That's the main challenge through the week to work on that timing. It does now look more like Friday afternoon and evening when those showers and storms come in, which really cools us down for the weekend. North winds coming in, lower humidity. Should be some great weather and unusual weather for golf out here at the Zurich. A lot of times we're sweating it out, of course, uh, but it definitely looks like another cool shot coming in, just like the one we saw this past weekend, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, in the next week looking cool as well, guys. So, you know, we're continuing to trend with these late season cool shots. I don't mind it, and, uh, you know, hopefully it doesn't rain too much out here. Yeah, we'll take it, hey? Late season cool yeah. shots. Thank you. <laughs> uh, school on the North Shore gets an A-plus because of how it's come back to the classroom. And WG knows Bill Wood went from Folsom, or went to Folsom, to bring back this blue ribbon. Let's pick this piece of evidence. Why does this piece of evidence illustrate? In Mrs. Perkins' eighth grade class, Louisiana kids learn a lesson in literature and in life. Not all the learning is uh, in the books. Not at all. I feel like here we learn stuff outside of academics, like strengthening our mind for things we can do outside of school. If these halls could talk, they'd really have something to say. Now that Folsom Junior High has been named a comeback school. He is not a nature faker, right? One of the smallest to get one of Louisiana's biggest honors. The world needs to know. From this honor, I think they'll see that this small school has, is, is capable of meeting the goals of our students and making sure that they get what they need. You don't have to be a big school to do big stuff. No, no, not at all. All right, we're dealing with geometry. Math and class matters, and, and these kids and have the comeback rooms. test and scores to prove it. Comma six. Past the pandemic and through two hurricanes, their numbers also add up in English. Give me another piece of evidence that supports that. Where an assignment to write about the woman who most inspires them became homework that hit home and a tribute to mom. Even when she has so much to deal with, she still shows so much love. I think your mom deserves not just a three paragraph essay, but maybe a whole book, <laughs> maybe a whole library. Maybe. In the same library where you'll also find the school yearbook. Okay, who wants to read that in bold print? Landon. From Folsom Junior High's comeback year. Explain, and that is super important. Bill Wood, WGNO News. A look at what's on News Nation tonight after the break.
One-on-one -on -one with country music superstar Brad Paisley. Hear about his trip to Ukraine and what he thinks about musicians entering the culture wars. It's a must-see, can't-miss exclusive tonight on On Balance. Then on Dan Abrams Live, caught on camera, a substitute teacher in Texas operating a fight club in her middle school classroom, the shocking video, and the mother of the student who recorded it all. Tonight on Dan Abrams Live, see why more people are turning to News Nation. To find News Nation, go to newsnationnow.com and select Channel Finder. And we want to show you the ground patty is officially taking orders in its new home in Kenner's Rivertown. The restaurant was in Metairie for years before it burned down in January. Yeah, and now it's time to make new memories at the old porch and patio building. You see the old name on there. The restaurant is just taking to-go orders from their full menu for now. They're open Tuesday through Sunday, 11 to 8. Just call ahead, we're told, to place your order. All right. Thanks for watching WGNO News. Stay tuned for World News Tonight. It's next. We're back at 6. We'll see you then.